Hi everyone, it's TTL back with another video for you and today we're going to be taking an Intel, a look at Intel Optane memory. Now when I say memory, it instantly makes me think of DRAM, memory sticks, how we would normally call it. But this is basically an NVMe drive, it's got, it's an M.2, it's, how, it's, it's what I would call an SSD. But weirdly, it's not an SSD because they do have SSDs as well and they've called those Optane as well. So you do need to look for Optane SSD or sometimes they can get called Optane storage. And then you do get the Optane memory, which is the cache drives. Now I'm gonna give you a boiled down, very quick version of what the cache actually does. I'm gonna to talk to you about the testing that we've done, but you can click underneath and go to the Overclock 3D website. There's also a link under there if you wanna to go to the uh, Intel website as well to go and have a look. There'll be one for the Intel specifics, but I'm also gonna put a link underneath for you so that you can go and double check any of the support that I talk to you about later, because it is only supported on certain chipsets and by certain CPUs. So you can click on that and you can go and have a look and you can see if it's going to work for you. But cash, what does it do? Because it's only a 32 gigabyte drive that I've got. They do do a 16 as well. Now the 32 gigabyte in the UK is around 55 pounds. And you instantly start thinking, because it looks like a solid state drive, you start thinking that the 32 gigabyte isn't big enough. But what um, this actually does is with some software, it stores in a secondary place on this drive, the most, most accessed files on your PC. So from your boot up, your most active, um, active games, and it's constantly updating. So what it does is it does copy the files from your slower drive onto this drive to make those drives, uh, so th those accessed files faster. Now Intel have been pretty good at doing the low Q depth stuff, so the small 4K files, they have found a way of making their um, access of that quite quick with their 3D X point technology. So it, that's how they're getting around the smaller files and the software does that. Now one thing I will say with the software, you, you can take this in and out at any point. What you do is you fit it, you install the uh, Intel software and then you just go and click enable. But one thing I do need to stress is if you want to remove it, you do need to go into that software and disable it first. If you don't disable it first, when you go back to try and boot up, it will more than likely blue screen. And it's just because rather than looking for the files on your native hard drive, it will be still looking for this, which you've removed. So you do just need to remember to turn that side of things off. As far as maintenance and everything is concerned within the software and everything, it does it all for you. Whatever files you access the most, it will drag them onto this to make boot and loading times a lot quicker. So you don't need to think about it, you don't need to worry about it, you don't have to worry about defragging or anything like that. Um, the one thing I will say is when you first use it, because it's not uh, accessed those files and it's still learning your um, patterns, it will be just like you're using your normal drive. So in the testing, I actually ended up using a, and this, you might say that's a, a NAS drive and you're correct, it was, but I really genuinely didn't have a lot of mechanical drives available to me and much less mechanical drives that I could actually format to put a version of Windows on because we've done some boot time testing as well, which meant we had to put um, uh, an entire install onto the drives. And we have done quite a lot of testing for this. So it does take a while. So the first boot, it's gonna be getting used to things. And normally two or three boots at the prime performance peak. Does the same with games and stuff as well. And don't forget what I said, as you start using files more, it will adapt and fill itself up with all the most access files, most access files. and it has made quite a bit of difference in some of our testing. But when we do come to support now you do need to remember, I'm trying to remember this off the top of my head, but I'm not a robot, so I do keep a few notes, but I'm, um, I'm gonna try and remember. Anyway, so it's seventh gen onwards. Now that's seventh gen CPUs. Now that does include X299, but it's mainly the uh, 200 chipset and the 300 chipset. So by 200, it's all the 200s. So you've got Z270, you've got um, uh, H270, you've got B250. Same with the, Z, the 300 series, Z370, H370, uh, B350. The uh, X299 7th gen processors 
are supported, but, and this is where it gets a little bit complicated, so I do need to make sure that I cover these points, um, you can only have it as your boot drive. Uh, and by that, I mean uh, you can speed up the boot drive that you've got on your system, but if you've got a storage drive that you want to speed up, uh, that's not supported on X299. It is on any th all, all of the 200 and 300 chipsets with the 1151 socket. So with the Z370, uh, Z270, etc., you can have an Octane drive that will boost, boost um, you, you can choose what you want it to boost. It can either be your uh, boot drive, as long, and we do gonna get even more complicated now, is it is a SATA-based drive. Um, and the same if you wanted it on a storage drive, for example. So you might have a, a big hard drive like this. You could have a 10 terabyte hard drive like this. Doesn't necessarily need to be a NAS drive or anything. Any uh, SATA-based mechanical hard drive you could have that plugged in and you could speed that up. So you could have all of your Steam files on your uh, secondary drive, let's say, and you might be lucky enough to have an M.2 drive as your boot drive, but you wanna get a little boost on your game drives. So then on the, uh, the 200 and the 300 series chipsets, you can then boost that secondary drive. It does get a little bit complicated. It even got a little bit complicated with me trying to work it out and even worse with me trying to talk to you about it. But, so you can do that. Uh, so the, the, I'm gonna be completely honest with you. When I went into this, I was interested from a technological point of view because you know I'm a reviewer. I actually enjoy testing and discovering this sort of stuff and you know going looking, but I, I, I'll be perfectly frank. I went looking for flaws, and I genuinely do mean I went looking for flaws. So straight away, I found out that it has to be SATA-based drives. Um, so your M.2 drives out there, your U.2 drives out there, you can't boost these. But then when you do start to break it down and work out the speeds and the fact that it needs to speed up a slower drive, then you do get to the point where you do start to understand, because these technically are a little bit slower than any of the good kind of um, M.2 drives that are out there on the market. Intel have got the 900 series ones. There are obviously other brands out there that you can get, and these are a little bit slower than that, but they're not built to be uh, individually like benchmarked. It's about speeding up other drives. So if you've got a normal um, SSD, so a 2.5 inch SATA SSD, or, no or a normal SATA mechanical hard drive, that's where this is aimed at speeding up. And if you think about it, you could technically have a massive 10 terabyte big drive, like I said, or maybe a one terabyte or two terabyte, 2.5 inch SSD, and you'll be able to bang this in for 55 quid and give it that instant boost, and it will keep adapting to whatever files you are using most. Can take a couple of restarts, as we will see in the graphs. Now, one thing you do need to see, uh, down at the bottom, you've got the restart, the second boot, and the cold boot. The cold boot is the time it took to boot up with um, it enabled first. So when you go into the software and you click enable, what it then does is it will reboot the system for you. We then timed that time to give ourselves the, uh, the, the, the initial kind of level that we were going for. And then what we did for the second boot, it technically wasn't the second boot, it was actually three boots. And what we did was average the time out. Um, but it can get quicker over those three. Uh, we did find that some applications took a little bit longer, but genuinely by about the third restart or the third time that this system had been used. So you would restart for the boot times and then, or the third time that you'd shut, uh, shut a program down and started it back up again from within Windows for the, uh, like the games and stuff like that. And then, uh, so you can see, for argument's sake, we'll go for the Iron Wolf time. So the plain 10 terabyte drive, the first time that we opened that up with Octane, it took 32.5 seconds for it to get to the desktop. And then uh, it then took 20.4 seconds once we started to uh, go through it on the second boot. After a few restarts, it then went down to 9.4. So you can see already that it starts to learn the files and really speeds things up. Now, we did get some kind of weird kind of numbers that we uh, that was spat out a couple of times, like the normal Iron Wolf actually seemed to do it quite quickly. Uh, um, 
after it had been restarted a few times. We don't know whether it was kind of a weird glitch with the fact that we had a fresh version of Windows or something on there, but I couldn't explain it. Doesn't necessarily mean I'm gonna leave it out though. But you can see, and at the top of the graph, you can also see that there was a very good boost with the, um, uh, the Corsair XTI Optane, with the Optane. So the only reason why I used the Corsair uh, XTI, it was the only one terabyte drive that I had here. We banged it on Windows, put all of the benchmarks, everything on it that we normally would do, uh, filled it up with the games and all that sort of stuff. And then we started to do the restarts and we also ended up installing the, the game files on there, which I might add, I'm pretty sure that my ISP is gonna be going nuts with the amount of times because each one of these drives had to have all of the games downloaded onto it, all of the files. So it genuinely took such a long time to test. But one of the things that you guys might be interested in more than the boot times, although I know boot times is good, but let's face it, we can click it, check our phones while we're waiting for the system to boot up anyway, is the game loading times. And it can have a very good impact on the game loading times. So you can see, the one thing that you do need to realize is the Intel uh, 905 and then like the 970 Evo and the XTI normal times, so the ones that don't say Optane, we've put those in there so that you can see the difference between the selection of drives. If it says Optane with it, then that's the drive with the uh, Optane acting as a speed up cache as well. And you can see that it can make a fair bit of difference between, for argument's sake, the Corsair Neutron with the Optane, and, but more really is the, uh, the Seagate mechanical, because obviously that's gonna be quite a bit slower. It's having to spin the platters and look for the blocks. Um, so being able to do that and s reduce that time that it's having to search and put that onto the faster Optane drive has made quite a bit of difference. So that was with Rise of the Tomb Raider. We did a similar thing or the exact same thing with DSX as well. And as I said, you can see the, the, you've got the quicker M.2 sort of stuff that's quite quick. But then you can see that the XTI, for argument's sake, was pretty good up there at the top of the graph. But don't forget the big red bar that's out to the right is the cold boot. So that's the normal time for that drive without the Optane on it. So the long and short of it is, um, I, when I first got this, I genuinely, I personally wasn't completely sold with it. I do think it's in a very, very kind of gray, kind of niche area to the market. So for me, I think this would have been absolutely perfect to have been able to kind of supercharge an older PC, but because it's got that M.2 format and you need the chipset support, the newer chipset support, I did ask Intel as well, and they said it's not something that they can roll out with firmware on uh, older chipsets, but also, like I said, you need an M.2 port anyway. Uh, and with some of the, uh, the older platforms, they probably aren't gonna be the best suited for the amount of speed that this can provide because if you think about it, some of the old platforms, if it's not got an M.2, you're then gonna to have to go into the PCI Express. So if you go into PCI Express, you're gonna have arguments with lanes and it, it gets immensely complicated. So it is, I think it is a bit limiting, the fact that this is only available on the 7,000, sorry, the seven, I will get my words out, the seventh generation and eighth generation CPUs, which then works out the 200 series and the 300 series chipsets. The only reason why I say that's a bit limiting is because that's already quite new tech. So if you're one of the people that are still clinging on to a mechanical hard drive as your boot drive, this will be a very, very simple click in, click enable in the software way that you're gonna be able to instantly boost your system. To be honest with you, those of you out there, if you are still using a mechanical as a boot drive, on one of those platforms, you're genuinely missing out because the new solid state drive technology will literally change the way that you look at your PC in a monumental way to the point where I actually don't use uh, mechanicals in any of my testing or any of my systems anymore. And it's just such a night and day change. You could go back um, and, and sort of say that this will be the, probably the biggest performance increase, or at least this or a normal solid state drive will be the biggest performance increase that you'll get on your system for quite a while. The point where it does kind of come into play a little bit better is speeding up a secondary drive, which is obviously only available on the 200 series or the 300 series drives. Now, if you do that, it does make a lot more sense because it means you can have a big beefy storage drive with all your games on it, maybe films and stuff as well, but I would assume that the most of you are gonna be worried about getting your games boosted. 
And if you did do that, then this for the money does make quite a bit of sense and it will really give that a big boost. Mechanical drives are worth uh, or cost a lot, lot less than going down the SSD route as well. So if you think about the fact that you could have 10 terabytes for less money than maybe the price of a uh, two terabyte uh, normal solid state drive, it, it does then start to kind of make sense if you're not, um, uh, if you need that much space. But don't forget you can still with a normal two terabyte drive, you can increase that as well. And it can be clicked in and upgraded. The one thing that I would say though, which is really for me the place where I think this will shine the best would be on a laptop that might come with either a slow solid state drive in it or a mechanical drive, might be running on one of the low power i3s or something like that. And then this is an upgrade to something like that to supercharge the throughput would make a massive, massive difference. And the reason why I say that with a laptop sort of uh, thing is because if I'm honest, and I, I will be honest, if there's any of you out there that are on mechanicals with a Z270 chipset or a Z300 chipset, you, I, you genuinely do owe it to yourself to jump onto a proper solid state drive. But then if you are on a proper solid state drive, you can use one of these to then boost it even further. Now I'm not trying to sell it to you. I'm just trying to make sure I cover every point about the slight little caveats that I think was kind of confusing with this. And that's why I said at the beginning, it was a bit of a gray area. So I, I can see the point in it now. I genuinely can. I'm not the type of person that's gonna run a 10 terabyte mechanical and then add this though. They're probably not gonna like the fact I say about it, but I do like to keep it real. But I do know there will be some of you out there in that kind of little gray area that this, for 55 quid, it might be something that will, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but 55 quid, you're probably gonna spend that uh, if you went out with your mates, had a pizza, went out for some beers, you can easily blow that sort of money and you can have that and it will, it will really end up speeding up your system. <clears throat> or you might be like, I'm not gonna go out and do that with my mates, I wanna buy something like that anyway. So you've got the performance data, you can see the difference it made. Just remember the fact that after a couple of restarts, it gets even quicker, so it's not gonna work straight out of the box. And you do need to remember that it's uh, slightly limited with the chipset support. X299, sadly, you can't use it on secondary drives, which is a big tripping point, because in all honesty, you're not likely to be on X299 and spend all that money on one, one of the supported processors for X299 is the 7900X. I don't think you're gonna be using a SATA drive on that unless you're using one of the SATA SSDs. But if that's the case, peeps, you've spent that much money, you probably deserve to go and get yourself a 900p uh, M.2 anyway. So there's a few little caveats there that you can take the data, you can uh, rip it apart, you can click through to the Overclock 3D website. I have tried to cover this. I know I've gone round in circles a little bit, but that's because I do try to explain everything as best as I possibly can. And that can mean that I uh, go over it a couple of times, but that's just be the way that my head works. And just to show you the notes that I didn't look at, that's literally, I don't, can't even remember what the numbers were for. That was for something else, I think. Uh, but I do just write numbers, write stuff down, and that's because if I write it down, it normally sticks in a little bit better. Hope you like the t-shirt. This has been Tiny Tom Logan talking about Optane. It has a place, it's just a small place, kind of over here in the corner somewhere for a few of us. Are you in that few? I'd like to hear from you underneath if you are, but for now, at least, this is Tiny Tom Logan out. Ding!